The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. I'd like to welcome everybody to today's webinar, where we'll be learning more about BTX's own Book It Room scheduling solution. I'm Kim Robbins, and I'll be your host today. Joining me is Chris Poulin, BTX's Vice President of Technology. Chris is the architect of the solution and our resident room booking expert, so get your questions ready. Just a few notes before Chris starts the presentation. We're recording this session and making it available after the call. And we're going to hold all questions to the end of the session, but please feel free to use the question bar as you think of questions, and we'll get to them right at the end of this about 30-minute presentation. So with on that note, Chris, I'll just hand it over to you. Thank you, Kim. And hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. I am going to get started and take you through Book It. Uh, we'll talk about what Book It is. I think that's a, actually pretty silly because everyone knows it's a room scheduling system. We'll go through some of the features and benefits, how you can centrally manage the settings of all of the panels, uh, installation information. We'll talk about some selling tools that are available to you and some list pricing. So as I mentioned, Bookit is a multi-platform room scheduling system. It is very affordable. It works with the most popular back-end systems, which are Exchange, Office 365, and Google G Suite. Um, I should make a note that Google G Suite is the paid version. The free legacy version does not work with Bookit because it doesn't support resource calendars. Uh, also, you should know that it works with any flavor of Exchange. It'll work with an on-premise Exchange server, a hosted exchange server, or Office 365. And <clears throat> when you book an exchange, your meeting shows up on your own personal calendar as the organizer as well as the room calendar. And that's good for several reasons. We'll talk about that in a little while. Uh, when you purchase the Bookit system, you get uh, our 7-inch PoE touch panel. Uh, those are IPS LCD panels with great off-axis viewing. Um, a service mount bracket, the Bookit software, an international power adapter if you don't have PoE available to you. Bookit is Wi-Fi enabled, so if you need to use Wi-Fi, if you can't get a uh, wired Ethernet cable to it, that is an option as well. You also get a two-year warranty, hardware warranty, and one-year software maintenance. So let's talk about some of the features and benefits. Um, the user interface is if you've ever used a mobile device, if you've ever logged into anything or made a calendar appointment, uh, that's what Bookit is. It's really self-explanatory. There's virtually no end user training whatsoever. You can schedule at the Bookit display. You can use your computer, you know, a laptop or a desktop or your mobile device. No special app is required. The installation is an easy single cable PoE installation. The integration on the back end is very easy. IT admins do this stuff in their sleep. Um, it, there's some very easy setup steps in both in Exchange and in Google. It's very easy to do. You can centrally manage all of the settings uh, through the Book It device management portal, which is a uh, web-hosted portal uh, of BTXs that allows you to manage those things, including uh, pushing updates. We do offer uh, a support uh, function, and that's not uh, support for Book It, but it's to summon your help desk. So if anything goes wrong in the room, whether it's with Book It or most likely, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> the equipment in the room, uh, you can just summon your tech support uh, team with just two touches. And uh, the list price of Book It is twelve ninety nine US. So room status in Book It is told by the UI itself. So we built it into the UI um, rather than putting. Uh, lights on the side of the panel, we have made the UI itself your status indicator. And the reason we've done that is because you can see it from far away. We've also had some people object to the look, the Christmas tree look of a hallway full of uh, lights. Uh, but because of the IPS off-axis viewing, uh, you can see it easily in an alley shot going down a hallway or from far away. A great example is BTX has a hallway that's about 100 feet long with one of these seven inch panels down at the other end in one of our conference rooms. And even though you can't read what is on the sign from that distance away, you can tell immediately the status of the room. So green is gonna tell you that the room is available for booking. We also offer an upcoming meeting warning, and this is something that not all uh, solutions have. This is configurable from five to 30 minutes uh, 
in five minute increments and you can turn it off if you don't want to use it and what happens is uh, the configuration if you set it for five minutes five minutes before the meeting the screen is going to turn gold like this and it's going to let you know don't go into that room because it's about to be occupied and of course red is going to tell you that the room is occupied <clears throat> don't go into the room or you'll be barging in on someone's meeting there's a couple ways to add a meeting. Of course, you can use your mobile device, or you can use your laptop or your desktop, or you can book from the sign. If you actually select the Add button, that's going to require a login if you're doing this at the sign. Uh, the benefit of that is the meeting is going to show on your calendar. Essentially, what it's doing is creating a meeting on your calendar and inviting the room to it, just like you would if you were doing it from your desktop. And the big benefit is that only the organizer can change that meeting. No one can come up to that sign and affect your meeting in any way unless they stole your credentials. That's what the login screen looks like. Again, it's very, very easy uh, to do. We also, uh, upcoming in just a few weeks, uh, we're going to be releasing a new version of Book It, and it's going to have our Meet Now function. That's an ad hoc booking functionality, and there's no login required. So if you're walking down the hallway with a colleague and you have something you need to hash out that's going to take about 10 minutes, if you see a free room, you can just go in and press the Meet Now button and make a quick meeting without having to log in. It does occupy the room calendar, so if someone's sitting in their office and they want to try and book a meeting for the time that you're in there, it's not going to allow them because the room is still seen as occupied. Of course, because an ad hoc meeting, if someone wanted to play a joke on you and come down and release your meeting, they can do that uh, because there's no login required. You can book meetings at the assigned room as we just discussed, and you can see meeting details for the room. You can also book meetings in another room. So note, we have a room list drop-down and we have a room drop-down. So some organizations will segment their rooms with room lists. They may do it by floor, or they may have multiple buildings on a campus that uh, allows you to have different lists of room. If you change the room list, it'll load the room the rooms in that room list and you can select that while you're adding a meeting and book a meeting in any other room. So you can book any room from any room. You can of course extend meetings uh, of course and if you try to extend a meeting uh, beyond the start time of the next meeting it of course is going to tell you that you can't extend it but it will also rather than just telling you, you you're overlapping another meeting it'll tell you the precise time that you can extend until. You can release active meetings. What this does is makes the room available for another user. So if you book the room for an hour and you only took 15 minutes to do what you needed to do, you can release the room. And what that does is alters the end time of the entry on your calendar and the room calendar and makes the room available for the next user. You can also delete an active meeting. So if a meeting has come up on the screen and the meeting is not going to occur, you can actually go up to the screen and the organizer. Uh, if it is a, uh, a regular ad, can delete that meeting, and that'll delete the entry from all calendars. We also offer a meeting check-in. The meeting check-in works with an auto-release function, so there are two time windows when you're configuring this. This can also be turned on or off, just like the upcoming meeting warning, and the two time windows are configurable from 5 to 30 minutes and 5-minute increments. The first time window is when the check-in button is going to appear on the screen before the meeting start time. The second time window is the auto release time after the start time of the meeting. So if someone doesn't press the check-in button within that second time frame, the room is going to automatically release. Automatically release pardon me. Um, this is a little bit different from an active release in that it's only going to alter the end time of the room calendar entry. Just because people didn't physically make it to the room, doesn't mean that they didn't have the meeting, doesn't mean they didn't do it via Skype or meet in someone's office or something like that. So it leaves the organizers meeting alone. In the calendar screen, you can see details for all the rooms. So if you press a day on here, it's going to change to a list view, and that list view will take the day that you touch it and it's going to scroll it all the way up to the top. From there, you can scroll through the meetings with your finger and decide which, route, which uh, meeting time slot you want to use, and from there you can just press the Add Event button and add your meeting. Of course, you can go and see details for any other room. So if you press the Demo Room, 
that's going to change over to the meetings that are in the demo room. And if you see a time slot you like in the other room, you can book it just by pressing the Add Event button. So you can see details for any room from any room in addition to being able to book those rooms from any sign. Any room from any sign. We do offer some languages uh, right now. Currently, we have English, French, and Spanish. Um, with version 2.0, which is coming out in just a couple of weeks, we're going to be adding Dutch, German, Italian, and Russian. So let's talk about setting up the rooms. The calendar uh, system platform requirements, Exchange or Google, do require a little bit of back-end work. Um, you, you do need to have Exchange 2010 SP2 or later. Uh, Exchange web services must be up and running. Um, that's really not a choice for for Exchange 2013 and above. Um, you need to create room mailboxes. You do need to create room lists. You need at least one account with full access permissions to the resource mailboxes. That's what you're going to use to log in to the meeting. Uh, no, sorry, log into the room when you're setting the room up. Uh, and then you need to offer uh, and author permissions for users to book to the sign. So what we generally do in that instance is we recommend creating a security group, giving the author permissions to the security group, and then you can onboard your users easily. And this, this can all be done through the Exchange Admin Console, or it can be done with Power, PowerShell uh, very easily. Um, the requirements for Google G Suite are very similar. You need to create resource calendars. Um, which is why you must use the paid version, the actual G Suite version. You need account, an account with full access permissions to the resource calendar. You need to share the calendar. Users need to be permit, have permissions to book on that calendar. And uh, it's actually not listed here, but the users do need to subscribe to the calendar. But very, very simple. This, these are things that uh, most admins can do in their sleep. Uh, our manual or user manual actually has the PowerShell commands that you need to run right in it. So if you get the PDF version of it, you can actually just copy and paste them right into PowerShell and off you go. We do require internet access for certain things. So uh, when you activate your license, uh, you need to be connected to the internet while you do that. Book it software updates are currently pushed from the Bookit device management portal, so you need to be connected to the internet in order to apply updates. Book it settings updates also, so when you're changing uh, the upcoming meeting warning, let's say, in order to save that, you need to be connected to the internet because it's going to sync that setting with the Book It Device Management Portal. And of course, if you're using a hosted solution, a hosted exchange solution, Office 365 or Google G Suite, you of course need to be connected to the internet because it's a cloud-based system. And using the Book It Device Management Portal, of course, uh, that that is hosted on a BTX uh, web server, and uh, needs you need internet access in order to talk to your screens from that. The workflow of the backend systems uh, are really not impacted by Bookit. Bookit is bringing that information forward. We're using the very mature and very well documented uh, APIs, Exchange Web Services API and the Google Calendar API to get the information. So some examples of things are whether or not you uh, allow booking outside of work hours, you know, if you've set that up, um, recurring meetings, if you're allowed to create recurring meetings or not, look ahead days, uh, exchange, for example, defaults to 180 days, so if you try to book anything beyond six months, it's going to give you a decline, conflict resolution, all those things come from the back-end system, permissions to book the room, all that stuff comes from the back-end system, and Bookit is going to adhere to those policies. Um, so room scheduling uh, can be handled in a couple of different ways in Exchange. In Google, you pretty much have one choice. You can have any, any choice you want as long as it's an auto attendant. But in Exchange, you can actually, uh, per room, on a per room basis, you can turn on the auto attendant, which is a first come, first serve uh, function with regard to uh, booking the room, or you can change it, turn the autom automated attendant off and use a delegate. And what it happens then is that delegate gets an email and they have the final say as to who gets the room. They can accept or decline that meeting request. And because it's a per room basis, you can do things, for instance, like make the executive meeting rooms delegate and make all other meeting rooms automated attendant. Or you could just do both. You can assign a delegate 
uh, and have the automated attendant, and that delegate can override what's happening uh, in the automated attendant. So uh, as a, for instance, if our CEO decided he wanted a room that I had booked, uh, we can go and reverse that with a delegate. You can go in there and bump me from the meeting and give it to the CEO. There are some areas where you actually need to touch the screen, so to provision the, the, the panel, you do need to do this on each panel, and that includes the licensing activation, license activation and agreeing to the end user license agreement. Um, there's an easier way to, to do this uh, than typing on the on-screen keyboard. There is a USB port in the back. It's HID compliant, so if you plug in a USB dongle for a wireless keyboard and mouse system, you can use a full-size keyboard to do all of this provisioning, and it definitely makes things a little bit easier. From there, you're going to go into your room account settings. You're going to select either Exchange or Google to provision. Uh, with Exchange, you're just entering a few pieces of information. You need your domain, that user credentials uh, that have full access permissions to the room, the email address of the actual room, and the full, fully qualified path to Exchange Web Services. It's that simple. With Book It uh, Google settings, it's a little bit different. You're going to go into the underlying Android OS, and you're going to add the Google account that has full access permissions to those calendars. And that's going to show up in this first drop-down list. And once you select that, it'll populate the rooms that that user has full access permissions to. You select it, and you're done. We have a bunch of things that are configurable on Book It, and we're going to go through those right now. Uh, in the settings area, we always offer up the license key. If there's uh, ever an issue, we may want to ask for that. So that's an information-only field. You can set a master password in here, and this is something I highly recommend. That controls the settings area. So if you set a password here, when you click the settings button, it's going to give you uh, a login where you need to put in that master password. And that's the only thing that's controlling users from getting into the underlying OS. So when Book It launches, it's going to ask you if it, you want Book It to be the launcher app. You're going to answer yes to that question, and then you can't do anything to shut Book It down. You know, if you went and used the, the navigation bar to press the home button or the back button or anything like that, Book It is always going to be the launcher app there, and it's not going to close unless you have the password to get into settings. So that's something I highly recommend. This is where you could do language selection for the panel. You could also do date and time selection. So here in the US, we have month, day, year. Most other places in the world do day, month, year. There's also an ISO format of year, month, day. All of those are available and impact any date uh, formats throughout the app. You can also select whether or not you want to do a 24 or 12 hour clock. Uh, there are many places in the world that use a 24 hour clock. Here's where you can configure the upcoming meeting warning. Again, you can turn it on or off, and you can configure it uh, from 5 to 30 minutes within 5-minute increments. This is the check-in auto-release that we talked about, and you can turn that on or off if you like. And the first one is the window when the check-in button is going to show up before the meeting start time, and the second one is when it will be auto-released after the meeting start time if you didn't press the check-in button. And by the way, anybody can check into the meeting, so I'm sure you're all – uh, have experienced waiting for a conference room to free up. There's a bunch of people milling out around in the hallway waiting for the next meeting to begin. Uh, that check-in button, uh, depending upon how long you gave it, is going to show up in the upcoming meeting section of the main UI, and any user can go there because they're physically there and press that check-in button. You can also disable bookings from the sign. What that'll do is that's going to gray out all of the buttons on the lower portion of the UI, and no one's going to actually be able to book from the sign. And uh, the, one of the main use cases uh, for this is flexible office space. We have some flexible office space customers that want to have complete control of booking those spaces. They don't want uh, Joe Entrepreneur coming in and grabbing the room with all the best technology, the video teleconferencing and a conference table and things like that, when all he needs is a printer and internet access. You can change the logo. On the bottom right-hand side where the Book It logo is, you can change that out to be your logo or your customer's logo if you want to customize the screen. Uh, to do this on the panel, you do need a USB key with a uh, stick with your uh, logo on it, or you can do it from the device management portal, which I'll show you in a little bit. 
that uh, gives you access to all of your network shares and your uh, local drives, makes it easier to apply that. We also give you six different options for backgrounds on there. So those are basically background textures. It's not going to change the overall theme of the at a glance meeting status, the green, gold, and red overlays on the screen. Um, we did not give our users the ability to upload their own because we've seen what a lot of users do. Some may put a cityscape behind it and it's so busy that you can't read anything. So we created these uh, with maximum readability in mind. This is the support message configuration that I was talking about. You can go and pre-configure a support message. This would be your help desk uh, email address. You do a pre-configured uh, subject and message and you'll need a from account to send it to. Usually that is the user that has full access permissions to the room. It's automatically going to go and grab the uh, room name and it's automatically going to grab the organizer's name if it's an active meeting. Two presses, press support, press send, and your help desk is on the way. We also have a de device management portal with two views. One is a view of an entire list of your uh, devices and we do allow you to put in your own designations for those things so that you can go and sort and filter on those. It lets you know what type of license you have, your license key, the version you're on. Uh, it gives you your uh, uh, MAC address. Uh, you can also from here uh, select auto update. What happens if you select that is that every 24 hours from the last time Booklet was launched, it's going to check for an update, software update, and if it finds it, it's going to apply it automatically. Or you could just check one of the check boxes on the right-hand side and update the selects one. So let's say you have a spare that you purchased for your installation. You want to vet the update before you deploy it to your production system. You can go and update that one uh, just by checking the checkbox and clicking update. Likewise, uh, by checking one of these check buttons here, you can go and edit your screen. And that's going to take you into the edit settings. And if you look at this, you'll note that it is very similar to what you saw in the device settings area in the actual app UI. Uh, so your master password, your check and order release, all those things you can change. We have a new feature coming out in version 2.0 and that's a hibernate function. What that's going to do is give you a schedule so that you can blank your screen out during off hours. That's going to save you some energy and it is also going to dramatically reduce after image effect which happens with every LCD panel. Installation is simple. As I mentioned earlier, single cable PoE installation. We do offer you uh, an international power adapter if you don't have PoE available to you. It is Wi-Fi enabled. We include our surface mount bracket and we also have a recess mount kit and a mullion mount for glass available. The mullion mount would actually mount to the glass mullion that is holding your glass in place. You can run your cables right through the mullion and it actually would float over the glass rather than being on the glass and no messy cables uh, to dress. You can get more information at www.bookit.tech. We have a brochure, user manuals, and actually I should have updated this. We have uh, several installation videos and a great overview video over there that you can go and look at it anytime you like. It, as well as being able to go to our YouTube uh, channel and get eventually this video uh, that we're doing right now. We do do individualized training upon request. We can do that with uh, our, our dealer customers, our integration customers, and we can also do buddy training with the end user when things are ready to deploy. Here's a quick look at pricing, um, and if you need more information on that, we can get you in touch with our regional managers so that they can talk to you more about this. Um, I don't think there's any questions. It's pretty self-explanatory on this one. And that was pretty much our presentation. I'd love to take some questions now if anybody has any. Thanks, Chris. Great presentation. Yeah, we had... We had some questions uh, come through. So one um, said they noticed that uh, 
didn't talk about reporting, so I thought I'd talk about that for a second. And Chris, feel free to jump in and correct anything that I might be saying that uh, you'd like to elaborate on. But reporting is on our roadmap, and some of the reports that we're planning to do are room utilization by room, room utilization by room and user, no-shows by room, no-shows that were auto-released by a user or an organizer, and peak usage by room. So, and all of these can be done within some certain time frames, daily, weekly, or monthly. So, that should answer that question on reports. If you want more clarification, please feel free to email, uh, to use the questions area, and maybe we can give more detail. Um, so, can, um, can we do bulk configuration of devices? Okay. Uh Currently, the devices uh, all, all need to be touched. So you have to go to each device to enter the license key and uh, agree to the EULA and provision the room. Um, we do have a, a, a far end roadmap item uh, so that we can do this in bulk, but currently you must touch each screen in order to configure it. Um, so question about LDAP. So can the managed device be linked to LDAP rather than inputting directly into Bookit? For example, a new employee's RFID badge is put into the system with a MAC address. Do they have to also go into Bookit or is this done automatically? It is not done automatically. Uh, the permissions to use the sign itself are actually controlled by those author permissions that we talked about earlier. So that user would be need, need to be added to that security group to allow them to book from the side, but that's simply it. So can you edit the settings for all the screens from a single location? Yes, you can. Um, in that device management screen, actually, let me just uh, dump out of this, and I will jump up here. If you go and look at this, we have a check all button, and you could just go down to the bottom and select that, and when you go and enter these settings and click save, that is going to save those settings that you just selected to all of the devices that you've selected. Somebody's asking about some security. Um, so you have to be an end user on the network in order to use Bookit, which can be a problem in some, you know, some facilities that have high security. Is there some way where we can get around that, or is there? I'm not sure I understand the question. So, if you have to be an end user on the network in order to have access to Bookit, correct? Yes, yes. So you you do need to have permissions to use the back end system. Okay. So so if, if you're if you're not in if you're not in the organization's exchange system with a, a mailbox you of course are not going to be able to use that. Uh, the only other thing that needs to happen is that user with a mailbox must be in that security group or directly given author permissions, which is a, a harder way to do things. It, it's much more efficient to do it with a security group. So, so yes, you do, do need to be part uh, of it, although Exchange, both Exchange and Google do allow external users to book rooms. That's a special setting that you would need to set uh, via PowerShell and in Exchange and um, also uh, in Google you can do that sort of thing. The one thing that's not going to happen there is that user will not have visibility into the calendars to see what room they're booking. So if it's an external user it would kind of be a trial and error thing, uh, trying to book a room uh, and getting declined messages until they find a time that works for them, that's accepted. Okay, so if the person who asked that question needs for further clarification, we can certainly do that offline. Somebody's asking about an API for Bucket. That is definitely on the roadmap. We are uh, looking to do a, a couple of things with, uh, with respect to interfacing with external systems. So uh, the first one is uh, that's on the roadmap is just to uh, spit out status commands from book it. So over HTTP, we plan on uh, adding strings that are just going to basically tell it what the status is, whether it's available, a meeting's upcoming, or the room is occupied. And once you grab that, 
you'll be able to do whatever you want with it. So if the room goes into a pending status, uh, you might be able to take that string and go and to, you know turn on the video equipment and you know put down the curtains, whatever your control system can do. Um, the other thing, uh, which is being handled separately, is an API so that you can actually uh, refer back to or interact back with Bookit. And the plan there is to create an API that will allow you to use things like occupancy sensors in the room. So if you walked into the room uh, without you know doing anything to the sign and the occupancy sensor senses that the room is occupied, it would automatically create an ad hoc booking. Or if it was a meeting that was scheduled and someone goes in the room and they see occupancy, it may automatically check into the meeting, that sort of thing. So that is definitely on the roadmap. Great. Um, so can you invite participants from the screen? This question came in. And uh, I can go ahead and take this one. So you can actually book a meeting from the screen, but it goes right on your calendar. So the way, the best way to invite participants is to go back to either on your mobile phone or at your desktop, go into that meeting and invite from either Outlook or from um, Google, correct? Or, or, or initiate the meeting from your mobile device, your laptop, or your PC. So there, you can't add uh, invitees from the screen itself. Okay. So is there a plugin that is needed for Book It to work, Chris? No, ma'am. All right. You know, all, all you need is a, is a client, a calendar client that is capable of communicating with those systems. So an Exchange uh, compliant calendar client or a Google compliant uh, calendar client. So for, for example, iOS calendar works great with Exchange. I use it all the time. So the follow-up question to that, is there a special mobile app? There is not. Great. There's no need, no no need for it. Yeah. Um, can you check in from your phone? Is there a mobile check-in? No, there's not a mobile check-in, and that is by design because the the whole point of the check-in button is to verify physical presence at the room. So someone might decide to check in like you check into your airline, you know, 24 hours before, but you don't make your flight. So the, the purpose of that is so that you, there's a, you verify that there's a physical presence at the sign and that people are actually going to go and occupy the room. All right. Um, I have somebody asking about MSRP, and that is $12.99. Um, okay, so are there any integration points with third-party vendors like Crestron? Well, we just uh, went over that with our, our roadmap items. So currently, uh, we don't, but on our near-term roadmap, we do plan on uh, offering up statuses over HTTP and uh, developing an API so that you can interact back with Bookit. So that is uh, a roadmap item, a hard roadmap item. Okay. So I've had a couple people, you know, interested in some of the roadmap items, and we know that 2.0 is coming out in a few weeks, and that has some of the features you've talked about. Do we know when the next version is going to come out after 2.0? Yeah. I, I, I don't have a timeline, but it's, it's, it's later this year, third or fourth quarter probably. Okay. All right. And we should mention, again, you know, if uh, you purchase Book It, of course, all of these things get updated when the system gets updated, right, Chris? Correct. Great. All right, so I have a question about licensing. How does licensing work? It is per device. So, so for instance, if you had a room with two entrances and you wanted to put a sign on each, each entrance, each of those would consume a license. Uh, licensing is, like I said, is per device. It's there not necessarily centrally managed. So if for some reason uh, uh, a device uh, had a problem, uh, let's say someone smashed it and you needed to get the device replaced, we would have to recall that license. Those license keys are bound to the devices themselves. So are there ongoing license costs? Chris, I don't know if you want to bring up uh, the Slide with the pricing, that might be a good one to reference. I can go back to that, certainly. Let's uh, go there. 
So the so Book It comes with one year of software maintenance and two year hardware warranty, but you can extend your your software maintenance one to two at one to two year um, intervals. So that one ninety nine for two years is you know how you keep your license up to date. So everyone should understand that the license itself is perpetual. Uh, software maintenance entitles you to feature enhancements, new features, bug fixes, all those groovy things that our continuing development team is working on. But you are perfectly willing to let your software maintenance lapse and use it until the Exchange and Google APIs have changed so much that BookIt stops working. But we don't recommend that, of course. We want you to keep using BookIt uh, for as long as you can. Okay. So let's see. I think we're getting near the end of the questions. Um, I think uh, one last one. Is there a way for BookIt to send meeting reminders? So, you know, oh, go ahead, Chris. No, so, so Book It doesn't do that. That is all handled in in your client and the back end system. So, uh, if you have a reminder uh, set up in uh, in your Outlook calendar or even on your iOS device to to remind at a, a certain period of time, that is where that would take place. It doesn't take place in the Book It system. So again, um, everything you need to know about Book It is found on www.bookit.tech. The videos and the documentation, um, you know, the user manuals, everything that we have is actually on the site. If you have more in-depth questions about Book It pricing, we're happy to uh, to connect you with your outside salesperson or the best person to uh, to talk you through that. Um, thanks again, everybody. What an engaging Q&A session. I thought that that was uh, really good. And you sh let me just give my email address and Chris's email address so that uh, you can reach out to either of us with any of your questions. It's kimr at btx.com or Chris Poulin, and that's Chris P at btx.com. Thank you, everybody, and have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you for joining us.